All right, so today what we're going to talk about is how to take the data that you recorded during your lab and put it into a graph. Specifically, we're looking to end up with something kind of like this, where uh, you're going to have your Google Sheets uh, or sheet with the data, then a graph, and then we're going to go all the way into Google Docs and uh, link that there. So it's going to be pretty quick and very easy. So first off, just find uh, your Google Drive and whichever folder you want to create your uh, spreadsheet in. Go down here to Google Sheets. And once that has uh, started, then you can start typing in your data. So uh, we're going to have two columns of data. The first column is going to be time. Uh, we'll label that with the units there a second, so you don't have to worry about that later. And then position, which is in meters. And then let's say you took uh, your measurements at, uh, say, five second intervals. So 35, 40, 45, 50. And your position of your bowling ball looked, I don't know, something maybe like this. Just sort of throwing some different numbers in there. It's not necessarily what yours looked like. But once you have that there, uh, the rest of it is actually very simple. We're going to click and hold and drag to select both columns of data, and then it's as easy as moving your mouse over here to insert chart. And then Sheets is going to give you plenty of different charts to, uh, to choose from, but honestly the one that we want is right here. We just want a basic XY graph. They even kind of show you a preview of what it's going to look like. All right, not too bad. And then uh, there's a Chart Types tab, which you can go in and mess with some things. We don't really have a need for that. The Customization tab up here, though, is definitely something that we're going to mess with. Uh, first off, the title, you can see you've got all your options there to manipulate the font size and color, and you can have a whole lot of fun with that. We're just going to say uh, position, meters versus time, of bowling ball. And as I'm typing and making these changes over here, you'll see that they're taking effect. This is not the, this is what the graph is going to look like, this nice little preview pane. Uh, we've got the legend on the on the right. Sometimes it's easier if we put it on the inside. Uh, just want to make sure that everything that we end up having there is visible. Background color, you can uh, change that, but you def you know, white's, I think, the best. Just some of these things just best to leave as default. Maximize, uh, it's a nice feature, but it's going to take away the units. We won't be able to see that anymore. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, it removes the units. From that, that uh, from the axes, and that's not something that we want. So uh, this allows you to talk about the font settings and what the labels are on your horizontal and your left vertical axis. These are all pretty good as far as the the, the increments. If I wanted to, I can I could change some of these. Uh, you can just play around with those. But the default one for here is pretty helpful. It's very readable. I could. Right now you can see that the grid lines, you know, for the, uh, what are we looking at? Time, it's showing, you know, 15, 30, 45. Uh, we could uh, specify that to be more detailed, but there's no real need to. We're just going to keep going down here. Scale looks good. The series, it, it says series position M. Uh, what this is referring to is, let's say you had multiple trials. You'd rolled the bowling ball multiple times down the hallway and had multiple sets of uh, of columns. Then you could have position, you know, first trial, second trial, third trial, and those would uh, show up as different series of dots over here on the right, and then you could do all sorts of analysis on that. This lab, I'm pretty sure everybody just took one set of data, so uh, we're just going to leave that as is. Uh, error bars, we can talk about that later. Uh, the one thing that you are going to be asked to do later on, you might as well just use, do it right here, and that is to talk about a trend line. And so right now there's no trend line, but we can have it draw a linear or an exponential or a polynomial. I think, in, uh, in fact I know, that the lab write-up specifies draw a line. This is the, the line of best fit, which is basically 
It doesn't necessarily go through all the points, but it uh, keeps about half of the points above and about half the points below. And it's just a, you know, it's, it's a linear approximation of this data. Once you make a choice there, I can actually scroll down more and give some more options. Uh, label, we can customize that. This is fine. Trend line for data series one. Sure, looks good. Uh, the R squared, that, if you get into statistics, you'll find out what that means. Basically, it just talks about how, what, how accurate is that line and how much does that correspond to the data. And the thing that we want to mess with for the label, actually, I'm going to go back. We want to change that. We want to see the equation. We want to see what that line is, or the equation of that line. So you can see here they've got y equals 0.79x minus 5.733. And that's great because uh, we can then use this uh, to study some relationships and to find all sorts of other things about that. So uh, you can always go back and change any of these at any given time. I'll show you in a minute how to do that. But for right now, we're just going to click on Insert, and there it is. It's actually overlapping my data, so I'm going to move it over here. And that's great. Uh, one thing I wish that uh, Google Sheets would do, but right now they don't. I, there's a lot of white space over here. I think that's why they had that maximize uh, option. But uh, we really don't want to maximize it because you lose the, the labels on your axes. And one of the things in every single graph you turn in, you definitely want to make sure that you have your uh, x-axis and your y-axis labeled. And not just with whatever the quantity is, but the units. That is essential. So uh, a couple different options. You go to view mode, which just sort of lets you watch it or look at it. But then if you go over here to edit mode, whenever you go to any specific item and click on it, it allows you just to change it right there if you want to make a quick change uh, in terms of maybe the font or what some of the actual text is. If you look up here, this little small downward pointing triangle, uh, you can do all sorts of stuff here. Uh, the first thing is you can go to advanced edit which this takes you right back to that uh, chart editor uh, with the custom customization options. And if you made a mistake somewhere along the line, this is where you just go back and fix it, and then you hit update, and there it is, exactly the same. What we're going to do with this is we want to put this into our lab write-up. So I happen to have over here a nice uh, Google document. It's totally blank. Hopefully yours will have some some writing on yours at some point. And you, uh, you might try to select on the chart and copy and then paste and it doesn't work. And that's because there's a lot cooler things that we can do with this. Um, I'm going to title, uh, put the title up here so we make sure we can find it later. This is, uh, we'll say, sample graph for bowling ball lab. All right, and it's got it saved. So the way that I can get this graph inside my Google document is, I can click this once again, this little downward facing triangle. And actually, I'm going to take that back. We're not going to do anything here. We can't. We can publish it and then link it and do sorts of other things like that. But actually, let me take a step back here. We're going to go over now to the Google document and go up here to insert. I can get it to stay. Chart. And then all the way to the down here, we're going to say from sheets, which is the nice thing about these uh, individual programs talking to each other. And so this is one I had selected earlier. This is normally the, the page that's going to pop up, and it'll say insert chart, and it'll have all the different spreadsheets uh, that you've been uh, working on lately, assuming you have a lot of them. You can see some of mine. Uh, let's see, this one, Sample Graph for Bowling Ball Lab. Great, that's the one that I just had selected, so I'm going to click on that. Uh, this is just to choose the spreadsheet, and then it's possible that you have multiple charts within that spreadsheet. In our case, we just have one. You're probably only going to have one. So we'll click on it, and then if you see this little check mark down here, this is a really sweet feature. It says Link to Spreadsheet. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, link that chart to... Uh, your Google Documents. So if you make any changes in the the sheet, okay, the, the the sheet program, and your graph changes, then it will be automatically updated in your Google Documents. It's a very cool thing. 
Uh, so you don't have to. You can, we can, you can uncheck it, but we're going to check it and we're going to see what that does. So I'll say import. And there it is. We can see everything's exactly the way that it was before. Uh, we can uh, crop this now. We can uh, open it up in Sheets, which is actually what I didn't want to do. Uh, we can unlink it so that that way it basically is as, as if we just copied and pasted it in there. Uh, we can do all kinds of stuff. We can, we can, we can rotate it, and, which you really probably don't want to do. Anyway, uh, move it around and whatnot. Now let me show you what happens. Once it's in there, it's linked. I go back over here to that data. And let's say instead of at uh, time 5, it was at 2. Let's say now it was a 20. So right now this data point is right here. I've turned it into 20. Hit enter. And it's up there. The uh, trend line has adjusted. And the equation has changed. So now it is y equals 0.594x plus 1.467. If I go over to my Google Docs, you say, hmm, nothing seems to be going on here. Well, I can click on Update the Chart, and there it is. It's now updated based on that data. Uh, sometimes it'll automatically update it, but uh, it seems like the, when I did it earlier, it was updating automatically. I didn't even have to click there. But that option for Update is always available, and it just goes out to that chart, finds it, and updates it. So uh, what we've talked about, just to recap, uh, how to enter data into two columns, making sure that we have our uh, column titles with the units. Then just selecting it, uh, clicking on the chart, choosing an XY graph, and we don't want the ones where the, little, the, the lines are connecting the dots. Definitely don't want that. Then went through, made sure everything looked good on our axes. We uh, did a trend line, and we included the equ equation. And then uh, we went over to our Google document and inserted the chart from the sheets. And it's helpful to, uh, you saw there before we did all that, we had a nice name up here uh, for our Google Sheet. And that way it's easier to find rather than just saying, you know, looking at it, it says untitled sheet or new sheet or whatever. So uh, those are the things that we did, and hope you found this informative. And I'll see you next time.